The Big Ten, home of some of the most successful programs in college football. Teams such as the Michigan Wolverines, the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Wisconsin Badgers, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. These teams are at the forefront of this historic conference, and with other promising schools such as Michigan State, Penn State, Northwestern, and Iowa, the Big Ten boasts one of the most competitive and exciting conferences college football has to offer. And then, there's the University of Minnesota. Residing toward the bottom of the Big Ten, the Gophers have not had the same success as many of their conference rivals. Despite some success in the early 2000s, the success was short-lived, and the Gophers have failed to compete with the best the Big Ten has to offer. They've lost nine straight games to Wisconsin, eight straight to Ohio State, five straight to Michigan, and 16 straight to Nebraska. Minnesota hasn't won a Big Ten title since 1967, and even that was a three-way tie. To top it all off, they've lost their last five bowl games dating back to their last victory in 2004. It's time for all of this to change. It's time to turn this program around. It's time to reshape this team. It's time to build a winner. The new era in Minnesota Golden Gopher football begins now. Well, college football season is right around the corner. In less than a week, 50,000 fans will fill the stands at TCF Bank Stadium as the 2013 college football season kicks off for our Minnesota Golden Gophers. For the second year in a row, Minnesota will face UNLV to start the season, and it will be the first time seeing the Gophers play under new head coach Harry Kane Sr. This is Kane's first head coaching position at the college football level, and let's take a look at the schedule he'll be taking the Gophers up against. The Gophers will play their first four games of the season outside of the Big Ten, and this schedule was set quite some time ago, but one small change has been made. Minnesota will not play Western Illinois in Week 3. Instead, they're going to play the UTSA Roadrunners, and they'll be traveling to San Antonio to play them again next year. It's not a very tough slate of games for the Gophers to start the season, and likely their toughest game of these four will be against San Jose State in Week 4. If you remember back to last year, the Gophers won all four of their out-of-conference games to begin the season, but only won two games in Big Ten play, and did go to a bowl game where they lost to Texas Tech. After the first four out-of-conference games, Minnesota will begin Big Ten play at home against the Iowa Hawkeyes before a big matchup with the Little Brown Jug in Week 6 at Michigan. Following a Week 7 bye, Minnesota has Northwestern, Nebraska, Indiana, and Penn State before another bye before they finish up the regular season against Wisconsin and finally against Michigan State. Minnesota has struggled in Big Ten play, and many around the country are predicting them to finish in dead last in the Legends division and toward the bottom once again of the Big Ten Conference. Now that we've seen the schedule, let's dig into this Gophers roster for 2013. They are of course led by senior defensive tackle Rashid Hageman, a man who could be an NFL player come this same time next year. A lot of the defensive players for the Gophers will be starting for the first time in their college career, but the lone returning starter at linebacker, Aaron Hill, will help lead the way for this front seven, and he'll be one of the leaders of this defense. On offense, the Gophers are very inexperienced at the skill positions, but they do have returning starter Danell Kirkwood at running back, who recorded over 900 yards last year and six touchdowns. But we know the man everyone will have their eyes on this year, sophomore quarterback Philip Nelson. Touted as the quarterback of the future for the Golden Gophers, he had the red shirt taken off of him last year. He played in seven games, including the bowl game, threw for 873 yards, eight touchdowns, and eight interceptions. And we'll see if he takes a step further in his first year as a full-time starter. And with a young and growing quarterback and an inexperienced receiving core, the Gophers could rely heavily on their ground game as you're led by Danell Kirkwood and James Gillum, the senior. But just how inexperienced is this Gophers receiving core? Well, we all know that A.J. Barker quit the team late last fall, and so the returning leading receiver is Isaac Frickty, who last year had 19 catches, 256 yards, and two touchdowns. According to Coach Kane's depth chart, opposite of Frickty, the starting receiver will be Devin Crawford Tufts, the junior, who last year racked up a total of 16 catches, 189 yards, and a single touchdown. 
Other contributors at wide receiver expect to be sophomore Andre McDonald and the senior Derek Angle. And a lot of people are really excited about freshman Drew Wolitarski, but he has been one of the players given the red shirt this year. And at tight end, the Gophers will start Drew Goodger, who played in 12 games last season, and he caught 13 passes for 115 yards and 3 touchdowns. And to round off the starting offense, the only two senior starters are fullback Mike Henry and left tackle Ed Olson. And now let's focus on the defensive side of the ball, where there are a lot of senior starters, but also a lot of guys who are getting their first chance to start. Of course, Rashid Hageman will lead the way at defensive tackle. He is the strength of this defense, and he'll anchor the defensive line next to Cameron Botticelli and defensive end sophomore Theron Cochran and the junior Ben Perry IV. At linebacker, we've talked about Aaron Hill. He was a starter on last year's squad, and he returns this year. In the middle, we're going to see Damian Wilson, a transfer from Jolens County Community College, and he'll have two years of eligibility at Minnesota. And starting at outside linebacker opposite of Aaron Hill will be the senior James Manuel. And now, moving on to the secondary, we have three starting seniors, but not very much starting experience between these guys. We have Jeremy Baltazar at cornerback, who played in all 13 games last year, but only started one, and he'll be alongside Martez Shabazz at corner. He played in nine games last year, and despite both these guys being seniors, they have little experience, and they only combined for one interception together last year. At safety, we'll see the senior Brock Vereen, who's the leader of this secondary. He played in 13 games last year, started seven, and recorded two interceptions. And at free safety, we'll see Demarius Travis, who played in all 13 games in his freshman year, but he's going to be new to this starting role. And so overall, definitely the strength of this team is going to be the leadership on defense. We'll see how the offense comes together starting in week one. But now we'll go over some of the redshirted players. There's quarterback Chris Streveler, halfback Berkeley Edwards, wide receiver Drew Wolitarski, who comes in as California's all-time leading prep receiver. And many thought he would get some playing time this year, but it looks like he's going to have the extra year of eligibility instead. Also redshirted are wide receiver Eric Carter, left end Hedrick Ekpe, Defensive tackle Damaris Peppers, outside linebacker De Niro Laster, cornerback Jalen Myrick, free safety Antonio Johnson, and kicker Ryan Sansoto. And so, we know the schedule for the Gophers this season, and we know the 2013 roster. And now all that's left is to see how it all unfolds. Week 1 will be next week when Minnesota hosts the UNLV Rebels to kick off the 2013 college football season in the debut of the Harry Kane Senior Era at the University of Minnesota. We'll see you in Week 1 from TCF Bank Stadium. Have a great day. Gophers football is almost here.